Hello, this is Jamie Romero with Batkey Howell, and today we're going to be creating a first Java program. Well, in order to write a program, we need to have some sort of editor to work with, and in this tutorial I'll be using Notepad++. This is a free and open source editor that you can get from SourceForge, if you'd like. Java programs begin with a class declaration. Today I'm going to be creating a class called Hello World. Hello World is the typical first example that you see many times when you're learning a new programming language. Notice every class has a set of curly braces associated with it. Uh, our class is also going to have a main method defined as well. The main method is structured in such a way so that you say public static void main and as a parameter the main method takes a string array of arguments. Uh, anytime you create a Java program, you're going to be writing a main method, and it's pretty much going to look like this. The only things that you can modify is you could use a different name for the command line arguments. You could call it arg or something different <laughs> instead of args. And also the array that you pass in, uh, you can declare that it's an array either by putting those square braces next to the string, the, d the data type string, or next to the word args or your variable name. Otherwise, it's always public, static, void, and main. And it always takes a string array of arguments as a parameter. Whether or not you're even going to use them, you always type that in. Again, main has its own curly braces associated with it. Inside the main method is where we're going to do just a simple printout. In Java, if we want to print to standard output, well, then we type in system.out.println. If we wanted to write to standard error, we would type in system.error.println. What we want to write out, we go ahead and put, in this case, inside the quotation marks, we're going to write out the words hello world. I'll throw an exclamation, at the point, uh, exclamation point in as well. Notice that this statement ends with a semicolon. That's it. We have ourselves a, uh, I guess, seven lines total, if you count all the curly braces here, a program that will be able to print to standard out. Let's see if we can save this file, get it running, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about this code. And so I'll go ahead and click on the Save button. And um, you know I'm going to actually place this into our Intro to Java Chapter 2 directory. Introduction to Java is one of the courses we teach here at Batkey Howell, and uh, Chapter 2 is normally where we do the Hello World example. Well, there's a rule. And the rule is that uh, any time you create a public class, the name of the file has to correspond to the name of the class. And so my class is Hello World, capital H, capital W, and so my file name is Hello World.java with a capital H and a capital W. I'll go ahead and save that away, and then I'll open up a command prompt and cd over into that directory where I save this file. If I take a look, I do a dir command, I will see that there's a hello world.java file there. And if I use the dos type command, hello world.java, it'll show me what's inside that file. And hopefully this is no surprise to you, what's inside the file is what we just typed in. It's the source code. Well, once you type in the source code, the next step that you need to go through is you need to compile the source code. And so the Java C command is what we use to compile our source code. We type in the word Java C, and we follow that with the, uh, the name of the file that we want to compile. So Java C space hello world dot Java. I push enter, and this comes back without any error messages. That means that there were no uh, problems with my typing. Uh, I have no compiler errors. In a few minutes, I'll show you what it looks like uh, uh, to get some compiler errors and how to determine what line of code those, the problems were on. So just uh, since that Java C ran and it came back without any error messages, I should be able to do a dir command and find that now I have two files. I still have my source code file, hello world.java, but I also have a class file, hello world.class. The class file is our bytecode, our compiled version of our source code. It's the bytecode that you pass to the Java virtual machine so that you can run your program. We could attempt to look at hello world.java with that DOS or dot class with that uh, DOS type command, but it's not going to be really anything that uh, we can read easily. Uh, this is binary content. It's, uh, it's intended to be read by the Java virtual machine, not by, by us as humans. We read the source code, the Java virtual machine reads the bytecode. 
Okay, now that we've compiled our code, we need to run the code. And to run our code, we simply type in the Java command, a space, and then the name of the class. So Java space hello world. We run that, and here it is. It prints out to standard out, hello space world exclamation point. You know, one of the common things that I see people making mistakes with is they type in Java space hello world dot class. So the intention is good. They want to run the byte code, but this isn't how we're supposed to invoke it. If we try to invoke it with the dot class extension, we'll get a big, ugly error message. And this is one that uh, you probably run into at some point in, in your Java uh, work, and you'll see a no class dev found error. Uh, anytime you run into that, you probably should ask yourself whether you're running the, uh, the code properly, whether you're running it with a Java command followed by the name of the class without any file extensions on it. Okay, so we've got ourselves a little program. It's been compiled. It runs properly. Uh, I want to go back into the source code and show you what, it, what uh, compiler errors might look like. And so I'm going to omit the semicolon at the end of the printout. And uh, that would be, that's not a legal Java program now. It's not going to compile. So let me save this and let's look and see what error message we're going to get when we run Java C. In DOS, I can just push the up arrow key and work my way through the history. And I'll just rerun Java C, hello world.java. And so sure enough, as you can see, we have ourselves an error that occurred, one error. And it's, in this case, pretty descriptive. It says, hello world.java, colon five, so line five semicolon expected. On the next line, it even line, it even highlights the line where uh, it thinks the problem is and puts a little caret symbol where it thinks that, uh, that you need to have that semicolon. You know, this is one of the better error messages you're going to see from the compiler. Uh, in all the Java work you'll do in the future, uh, some of the error messages will be better than others. This is a pretty good one. Uh, many times they're not so good. So let's go look at line five and see. And uh, sure enough, that is the line that needed the semicolon added to it. So if I were to save that and go back into my DOS window, I should be able to compile now cleanly. And if I wanted to, it would run as well. So let me see if I can find my Java command here. And it runs just like before. You know, a couple other notes that I want to talk about here. Uh, one is uh, the use of curly braces. When I'm teaching Java programming, many times I recommend to new Java programmers to put their curly braces in such a way so that they line up inside their editor, so that they're just uh, the open curly braces above the closed curly brace. Uh, and that, that's fine. It works great. Um, however, if you go and read books or you look at online examples, they may have the curly braces that look something like this, where they've opened the curly brace on the previous line. Again, that's perfectly fine, and many people use that. And you see that a lot in books because it saves space in the book. Um, I guess my point to you is both ways work. If you're new to Java, it might be nice to put those on their own line just so you can line things up nicely, but you don't have to. Probably the best thing is to go talk to other developers in your organization and ask them what the current coding of convention is and just stick to that. The other thing I want to point out is indentation. Uh, yes, we could write a Java program that looks like this with no indenting in it. And yes, it'll compile and yes, it'll run. But it would be really hard to maintain, especially when you have any more than just a few lines of code inside of it. So the rule is anytime you open a curly brace, you should indent the code inside there. So every time an open curly brace is there, you indent. When you close the curly brace, then that indicates the end of the indentation. Again, it's just for human consumption, but it, it really is recommended that you, you do proper indenting. Another thing I probably should mention here is uh, right here, the system.out.println. LN, uh, when we do put that on the print statement, it says print out hello world as well as printing out the proper carriage return line feed, line feed combination for your operating system. If we leave off the ln and we just do a system.out.print, what that says is print out hello world, but don't add any extra line feeds on there. And so let's save this and run it. Well, compile it first, then we'll run it. Java C, hello world.java, we got the compiler, it compiles cleanly. We run hello world, and as you'll notice, whereas before it had an extra little line after the hello world to print it out, 
Now there's no new line that got added in since we're using a system out print rather than system out print ln. Okay, well that concludes our video for today. Thank you very much for watching.